The first Armenian churches were built in the fourth century uh, as part of the conversion of Armenia to Christianity. We know this from textual records, but we don't have those original churches. We only, in fact, have one fourth century structure that's Christian in Armenia, and it's a tomb. The earliest churches that we have in Armenia date to the fifth and sixth centuries. And these were constructed by nobles and by clergy. And we can tell this by inscriptions. These churches were basilicas. That means they were large rectangular structures divided into aisles with a curved apse at one end for the celebration of the liturgy. These early churches were constructed with what would become the typical Armenian construction technique, something we call rubble masonry. And it consists of essentially inner and outer skin of facing stone that is sandwiching a core of mortar, field stone, other kinds of small stones. And this type of construction allowed for vaulting and other kinds of curved elevations because it is essentially a lighter weight. And it's also very strong. And we know this because in some cases where facing stones have fallen off churches, the core remains and the church is still standing. This technique differs from what we see in uh, contemporary monuments in Syria. Those structures, although very similar in terms of form, planning, barrel vaults, those structures are built of what we call ashlar masonry, which is large cubes of stone, a much heavier technique. When we move into the seventh century, then we start seeing plans and um, elevations, that is the, the upper construction of the church, that we can see is recognizably and distinctively Armenian. Just to give two examples, one, um, one plan that is known from the church of Hripsime, seventh century church, is found only in neighboring Georgia, but nowhere else. The plan itself is called a domed tetraconch. This is essentially a four apsed structure, four curvatures, if you think of a four-leaf clover, inscribed in a large rectangle. This essentially cubic structure is then topped with a cylindrical drum, a base, for a conical roof. And this type of structure is immediately recognizable as an Armenian form, and we see it even today in 21st century Armenian churches that look back to the 7th century for this form. So it's both the geometry of the massing and the plan types that are distinct to Armenia. In the 10th century and early 11th century, we can see an increasing refinement in the exteriors of churches. If you think of Ani Cathedral, for example, you can see the way the exterior of the structure is no longer just planar, that is just smooth stone, but rather the outside is encased in a web of blind arcades. So exterior sculpture becomes more important in the 10th and 11th centuries. Another very good example is Achtamar. This is a church that was built in the 10th century in the Lake Van region. And there, we see an entire program of figural sculpture, stories from the Old Testament, the New Testament, images of the patron, hunting scenes, banqueting scenes, all happening on the exterior of the church. So it's interesting the way these 10th and 11th century churches both draw from and depart from the 7th century monuments. In the 13th century, a new kind of form emerges, and it's called a gavit. A gavit is a form that occurs in the architecture of monasteries. It's not a church, it's a kind of chapter hall or administrative structure. We're actually not sure exactly how it functioned. But what's so interesting about the gavit is that we see here a real experimentation in vaulting types using intersecting arches, honeycomb structures that relate to Islamic architecture. All kinds of new coverings for structures start to emerge. And I can only think this is some kind of new experimentation and innovation that is being welcomed in the context of monastic architecture. These structures are incredibly technologically advanced for their moment. And I think we can see this very clearly if we just look to Ani Cathedral and related buildings. We know the architect of this structure. His name was Terdat. And to give a sense of how accomplished he was as an architect, we can note that he was invited to the Hagia Sophia, 
the Byzantine church in Constantinople to repair the structure after the dome had collapsed in an earthquake. So we know that Armenian stonemasons and master builders were admired for their achievements in their homeland and that the skills that they had were exported to repair arguably the most famous church in Christendom. We can also see, just observing the Armenian churches of Tradat, tremendous attention to detail and a kind of thinking through the architectural plan and its elevation. One of the most striking things for me, and I think for, for most visitors to Armenian churches, is the extremely fine quality of the stone surfaces. The combination of the smooth planes of masonry and their construction into cubes, cylinders, cones, a kind of symphony of geometry that makes them so striking. The other thing is that this form often occurs in a landscape that is otherwise fairly flat. So you have a really dramatic contrast between the, the high plateau of Armenia and these forms, which some scholars have compared to crystals pushing up from the earth.